Hello guys, this is Citra Psycho here, bringing you another video today. Um, there's just something I need to be getting off my chest, and that's how apparently we are, quote unquote, from my understanding, and not because I got it from this video, but apparently everyone's telling me this, and that's why I actually looked up this video, which I'll explain in a bit, is something called a content crisis. Essentially, we're not getting enough content. Now, two things I need to point out. One thing, well, number one, is the fact if you actually look throughout the generations of gaming, our con, as well, as I should say, it, the further we gone into gaming, and the, I guess you can say, more connectivity we've been getting with our gaming the more content we've been craving so in other words let's put it this way you bought let's go to 1980s nes right and it was a good console it's, it's classic obviously but when you bought a game you bought the game and you try to do the best you could do try to get the highest score get to the final boss finish the store whatever the case was and when you finished what did you do you went back and played it again you know try to do something different maybe find alternate paths you were wanting more fast forward a little bit further to i guess you can say the sega genesis now not that only this uh exact two games did it which was sonic Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles, they had this thing called lock-on technology. When you would put the two cartridges together, you essentially got, as you can say, DLC. Now, instead of not, it's not downloadable content, it was just more content. It's just how it worked is when you connected them, you actually had unlocked uh, secret levels, secret missions, uh, the the Master Emeralds. Um, you essentially, you're able to get more content out of your games right because what we wanted more you know now this was kind of like still the same though the, in this generation you know we fought you know fight to final alternate routes secret hittings endings stuff like that enter the original oh actually you know what enter the dreamcast dreamcast was what i believe was a good way of really popularizing the downloadable content on consoles for uh, the that um, uh, Moraka game I forgot the heck <laughs> haven't played it in a long time it was a musical game where you would actually use a pair of maracas and you would try to make sounds out of it right which was a pretty fun game don't get me wrong but the thing was it actually had a feature when you connected to the online network you actually were able to download more songs and more content right same with xbox but xbox got a little bit more advanced with it so such as halo 2 you're able to get more maps dlc you know and now we hit the 360 ps3 now we're getting fully more uh, in there uh i can't even say the word um into i guess you could just say more of wanting more content so we start see map packs uh, introduction of season passes you know stuff like that that really brought on for the more content and it got to the point where it was really out of hand that now it's just with the modern generation with Xbox one ps4 and I not really Wii U Wii U hasn't been bad with this but um essentially is you know having incomplete games being sold to us and having to buy DLC in order to get the full experience of the game which is in my opinion not that good of a strategy if you ask me but that's that's opinion to decide you know now what am I getting to at over the years we've been wanting more and more and more and more you know and it's getting to the point where four map four DLCs one season pass is not enough hashtag call of duty status god damn um now i do agree with this one guy this guy brings up the fact and i'll link his video down below um the second vi this will be second link i believe um he talks about how 
that we're in a content crisis and how he believes that Halo 5 Forge, you know, making a return, having other people create content for free because, you know, developers aren't losing money when they're making having other players because of the fact that they're giving out free DLC to begin with. It's not really hurting them in cost. But he explains it. He explains how it could affect future sales, but it can also affect the console sales, especially since how he says that it's a smarter deal on Microsoft because it also gives a chance for more Xboxes to being sold, which is, you know, I kind of agree with that. You know, it makes sense. But the first link I, I would bring to you, it will be the first one, Adam's link. Um, essentially, what he talks about is that he feels... That he doesn't want to believe it, but he feels that this could be the last generation of consoles uh, as we know it, you know. And, and essentially, I kind of get where he's coming from. Like, for um, where he mentions that, you know, we're probably going to get another variation of the PS4. They're going to call it the PS5, but essentially all it is is a downloadable. It's a console with a downloadable system, you know. And I, I see that happening. Honestly, I do. Like, it's kind of sad to think about it because, you know, it's always been a tradition for consoles to have, like, some sort of, like, cartridge system or went to a CD-based system, then oh, weird GDRs and now DVD Blu-rays, you know? We're not probably not going to have that, and, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a fact, you know? But, you know, it I see where he's coming from because, like, how... We're always wanting more, we're always wanting more, but it's like, they, it's like nowadays you can't get a full game. Honestly, you can. There's rarely where you can go to the store, get a full game complete, you know, and, you know, enjoy it. And, like, not having to connect to the internet for other online services or, you know. Um, and it's stuff like that that kind of really saddens me because the purpose of a game that I feel is that you buy the game. You're able to play it, fully enjoy it, uh, you know, and then the other stuff, the DLC, the online multiplayer, you know, and all that other stuff, that's an additional feature, other content, you know, not like, like, okay, I understand multiplayer is going to be a big thing nowadays, you know, that's, that's fine, though. that's fine and all, but like how, like, for example, like Call of Duty and Battlefield, it's like, you must, <coughs> oh shit excuse me um that you must buy the dlc and that in order to fuel the full experience of this game you have to buy our season pass you know to unlock more content to unlock more and see that's this kind of stuff that i'm talking about like sonic like look at for example let's look at sonic and mario their games are complete people can go back to them and play it and not get bored well eventually you do get bored but that's with any game right but, you know, you're able to play for long periods of time without being bored. Other Call of Duties, or like Call of Duties, FPSs, uh, third person person shooters, RPGs nowadays are even having the same problem. It's like, you know, you having to buy these content in order to fully enjoy the experience to get more out of your game. Why should you have to pay $120 when you should do something like Halo 5 is doing, right? And see where it's coming from, where it's like, you know, instead of having to wait three months for one thing new, Halo Forge is like a thing where every day there's hundreds and hundreds of new content being made. And they're made by people, it's free, you know, and, and that guy explains it in his video, the second guy. And, but one thing that really got my mind off, or got me thinking anyways, is, okay, we're struggling here on the PC. I mean, on the console, she already said it, <laughs> right? But if you look at PC, though, you see that they have stuff like this. If you really think about it, like, look at them, Counter-Strike, right? Mm, but every day I see new mods for surfing, custom maps. You know, you, that game is still strong. And how long has it been out? Probably a little bit longer than the 360, you know? And kind of amazes me, like, where the direction of gaming is going. Now, the reason, another reason that got me thinking is because we are seeing the end of the 360. Xbox already announced the production of the 360s is gonna already, you know, is gonna be over, and pretty soon they're probably gonna stop uh, supporting the servers because that's what they did with the original Xbox, which is kind of sad. 
but it's you know it's what it is it is what it is you know but when you think about it how many of those games that really relied on being online is eventually going to be discontinued like look at destiny for example like destiny is a game that if you don't have online access you cannot play the game it's impossible if you know a way go ahead but <laughs> from what i understand and and from what i know you need internet access in order to in play and enjoy the game and for those 360 players how will they enjoy the game that they purchased 60 dollars plus taking king plus dlcs and all this other stuff and they have to pay for it like you know and like they're paying for it and then like it's getting shut off like they're not they can't like it's not like they can go back and get their money back bungie just got off with the steal you know like next gen players are going to be lucky obviously because they have years and years to come but last gen players on the other hand they're screwed you know and there's games other games like that that really relies on their online multiplayer features their online dlc and stuff like that as of right now what i'm hearing there's a lot of people going out and buying 360 dlcs as we speak because they want to get them before the online service is shut off and we are like practically wanting more and more and more and more right and we're not gonna get that right um and so but like i was saying look at the pc side and what what do you see you see everyday mods being made and it's so, so great it's so creative and there's no restriction because why pc isn't practically an open platform no one controls like for example if i put it into perspective let's look at playstation controlled by sony or you know their playstation division they have the right to make certain updates you know as gamers we get to tell them um, you know what we want for example we want more in a party right they can arrange that while PC on the other hand no one owns it's not like Steam owns PC it's not how that works Steam is a dev is a platform where people can go and purchase PC games and they have no choice but to listen to the gamers because if they don't gamers can go somewhere else and buy games they can you know so many other resources and if steam doesn't listen then that's their fault you know so you know that's why pc is getting so much love right now and that's why pc players are not worried about the future of gaming now because consoles you know we're always having to think okay i buy this right probably gonna stop playing in a few years because they're gonna discontinue servers you also got to keep in mind you know how long does this last um you also got to keep in mind you know like what if next generation comes out pc players all you have to do is upgrade parts games transfer over easy look at xbox one and 360 it's having trouble backwards compatibility and look at playstation no backwards compatibility at all so you have playstation now which is an additional subscription which is honestly i think is a bunch of bull and pc does this for free it has so many um so much potential for being good now i'm not saying go ahead and go on pc but what my main point what i'm trying to get to is that these console companies yeah even though they're thinking smart like they're like for example with the halo 5 and forge they're not thinking big enough they're not thinking way bigger and the possibilities they can do to attract more people to their consoles microsoft especially since it has a practically almost exact archetype well even playstation 2 but I, Microsoft has a longer history into having an archetype of a PC has a better chance of doing something like this they have a better chance of making their console an open platform you know now I'm not saying that to have a full-on Windows 10 and all this stuff no 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 it can still hold its console value of having your own dashboard a little party system achievement like all that stuff that's really cool but you know giving the people freedom to mod give them freedom to do all this stuff now yeah when it comes to like online post off you know obviously we don't want that because you know in a multiplayer match you want to try to keep things fair and even as possible you know but that's mostly on the developer you know that's on it but um as a console standpoint you know a lot of consoles are being banned because they're tampering with their system and other stuff like that which is honestly i think is really sad because even bill gates when he first heard of people modding the original xbox he was impressed with that stuff and now it's just like that meant nothing like you know we have so much potential and so much like uh possibilities for us to actually like be able to play some of these games and you know 
and have fun and have un endless content now we understand they lose money okay they don't get sales or maybe it might affect the next game you know but if you're ch if your main goal is to get consoles into your home that's probably going to be the best way while satisfying people with content because at least p is not sure maybe the developer themselves may lose money but in the long run, they're actually going to gain more because they're going to still buy that game of copy. So, like, as an example, Halo 6 comes out, right? But it's missing that forge, right? Xbox is still going to get the console sales. And technically, 343 Industries is still going to receive that money for um, Halo 5. Because why? Because people want that more content. And essentially, in the bottom line is... If consoles were a lot more of an open platform, not too open, because, you know, we want basic simplicity as a console standpoint, that's why there is a console, you know, but if you make it a little bit open to be able to get more content into our homes, not only will gaming, not only will consoles and gaming will be saved, but we are essentially having, we're essentially future-proofing it without having to do weird 4K upgrade PlayStation 4s. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for the comments with the nice shirt and the whole leafy reference. Whatever. Anyways, I can't wait to see you on the next video guys. And as always, get her done. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use. Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true, baby, let the light